Uh, thank you for coming to the FOIA panel this morning. I'm extremely exhausted, and I'm sure you are as well, but uh, government transparency does not wait for us to get sleep. Um, my name is Dave Moss. I am an investigative researcher at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, we are a uh, nonprofit civil liberties group that works at the, tech, the intersection of technology and the law. And my role is to uh, shine light on government surveillance and other types of things. And I work on a lot of transparency legislation. And this is the third time doing a, a FOIA panel on Sunday here at DragonCon. And I like to uh, go through and explain a little bit about how uh, the Freedom of Information Act works. And then I like filing FOIAs for people live. So start thinking of things you want to know about your government, whether that's the local level, whether that's the state level, whether that's the federal level. Um, since there's uh, so few of us today, uh, I'm going to rely on you guys to be creative with me, and I can help too. All right? Uh, with that, I'll just go ahead and start going. Oh, so I should probably explain just one more time. Uh, if you want to file FOIA requests with us live today with your own computer, uh, this link will take you to Muckrock, which is the site we're going to be using to automate our public records requests. Uh, you just sign up, a, set up a user account, send me your, uh, once you do that, send me your username real quickly, and I'll approve you for the DragonCon group that we've uh, set up. And I think we're good to file up to 150 requests. I don't think we're going to get even to 5% of that today. <laughs> but, uh, but nevertheless, we can keep this going for, for about another week or so. I also want to apologize uh, because uh, the presentation I'm using today was made by a colleague, and I have not practiced it. So <laughs> I'm going to be uh, doing the best I can based on uh, uh, the wonderful presentation he has put together. So just jumping through. Uh, we're going to be doing a Freedom of Information Act primer today. We're also going to be talking a little bit about state level public records requests. Don't have a presentation for state level public records requests because that would require 50 presentations to give in an hour. So we're going to go over the federal and then I can talk a little bit about state level ones. So the Freedom of Information Act is a federal law. Um, it turned 50 this year and it requires the government to make records uh, available to the public. Uh, it allows anyone, uh, including non-citizens, to request government records. The one exception to that is if you are working for a foreign government, you are not allowed to file FOIA requests with intelligence agencies. Anyone here working for the, the foreign, foreign governments? No? And you? All right, so we're safe. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, folks can also sue the government. We have lots of FOIA lawsuits uh, against the feds. Um, so the the you know with the federal government, there's a a presumption of disclosure that uh, by default all government records should be disclosed. There are lots of exceptions to this rule. Um, and yes, yeah, so here are the nine exceptions. I'm not going through them because, again, that would take me a very long time. But sort of general, as you can imagine, national security documents don't usually have to be released. Uh, law enforcement records can be exempted. Uh, you know, uh, client attorney, rec uh, attorney client privilege documents don't have to be. Um, for some reason, oil wells don't have to be released. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of little statutes. And obviously, you know, your internal personnel records don't need to be uh, released as well. Um, FOIA uh, applies to federal agencies, uh, you know, so independent agencies, the FCC, the EPA, also, uh, you know, subsets of the executive branch, the DOJ, the FBI, of course, the military. And then there are certain government-owned corporations like Amtrak or the Millennium Challenge Corporation is whatever it is, uh, MCC. Um, the FOIA does not apply to Congress. Um, the federal courts, they have maybe some certain other procedures if you wanted to get administrative records from them. Um, and then the president uh, also does not have uh, or at least certain off most of the, of, of the executive office of the president uh, is not subject to FOIA, although they have other laws that require uh, some release of records. Um, there are a lot of documents that you can get: um, emails, letters, reports, manuals, lots of procurement documents. Um, I like getting data sets, for example. I like getting complaints. Um, you know, if there's a government record you can think of. It's probably uh, available in some form or another. Um, 
the one of the first steps to filing a FOIA request is just thinking about what kind of records you want or what agency you want information from even if you don't necessarily know what kind of record there is it does help to describe what kind of record you want but you know as members of the public we're not expected to know the entire record keeping system of the federal government and be able to ask for the um, IFC form 326595 uh, so you have you can be you can describe it in more general terms um, you can be quite broad you could ask for things that all reference a certain issue um, but sometimes the the larger set you ask for the longer it's going to take you to get it so if you ask for all of say Secretary of State's emails that may take you quite a bit for that to get released by the Secretary of State's office. Um, your requests also can't require an agency to make records that didn't previously exist. Um, so just as an example you are not going to want to ask for all documents that exist from an agency because that would be really broad although if you say you want a certain document like in our case, we have a lawsuit over this uh, secret interpretation of a certain part of the Patriot Act. Um, you might get records related to that, in which we did through filing a FOIA and eventually uh, getting uh, a lawsuit. So we have a panelist join us today. Yes. I I'm Dave. I don't think we've met before. Hi, Dave. Yeah. TJ Mile. I don't think we've met before either. Do a, I'll, I'll take a quick break for this and you can do a quick introduction to yourself. Sure. Uh, I'm the fill in. <laughs> <laughs> One of our panelists had a tree fall on his mother's house on Friday night, so yeah. uh, he is not with us today. Yeah, he had to he had to go take care of some family emergencies thanks to a slight hurricane. Uh, my name's TJ Myhill. I'm also a lawyer, so I'm filling in for Hayden's spot on that. Uh, we do civil litigation, <coughs> uh, business litigation, intellectual property, things of that nature. My firm has filed quite a number of FOIA requests. I don't have any examples for you here today because I didn't know I was doing this till Saturday. But uh, we can certainly talk about it or answer any questions you might have. But uh, cool. I'll just jump yeah. into whatever you have as you go sure. along. Yeah, I'm just going through a primer, and then we're going to file some live FOIA requests. And so as I'll take, you know, how this will work is I will take some requests, and as I'm kind of typing them up, get you to fill, in some, fill in some sound. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, when you're putting together a FOIA request, FOIA request, you can save yourself a lot of time if you just ensure that the documents you want don't already exist on the government's website. Saves you time, saves the federal government time, saves taxpayers some money for personnel time. Uh, you know, if you're if you're filing it and it's specifically related to a news article, something you saw referenced in a news article or something you saw referenced in a congressional testimony, it helps to cite that and give a link so they can't pretend they don't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, I'm going to skip this slide. Uh, uh, some other things to consider when you're filing a public records request or a FOIA request with the government uh, is that they can charge you fees for for copying and other kinds of, of fees so you'd want to mark down your public records request that hey like I'm good for paying up to 20 bucks if it's gonna go over 20 bucks please contact me and maybe I'll narrow down my request to keep it under that uh, although you can ask for a fee waiver um, if you're a member of the news media and that's very very broadly uh, uh, interpreted if you have just your own kind of blog that you're using that's enough um, and you can also uh, uh, make a, um, uh, an argument that what you're asking for is going to contribute significantly to the public's understanding of government activities. Um, yeah, sure. Yes, they do. They, and you can appeal that as well. So the question was, does the federal agency get to decide whether they're doing a fee waiver for you? And the answer is yes. Um, some of them are cool with it. Some of them are not cool with it. Uh, but if they do reject your fee waiver, you can do an administrative appeal, and maybe that gets you somewhere. Mostly, it's it's copying, but yeah, if you want to well, jump I in on that, throw, I was going to throw in the question, so you can answer the question. Oh yeah, sorry, a little sorry. More the question was: Was there any um, specific categories of, of areas that they charge? So, are there copying or duplicating costs? Are there research fees? Are there things of that nature? 
Yeah, it, it tends to be mostly duplication when we when we hear about this. Um, you know, if they're going to give you a thousand pages, they may charge you per copy. Uh, do you anything more specific about that? No, that's the only thing we've ever been charged for yeah. too. I don't think I've ever been charged for research time, but that's because what we've filed has specifically always been give me this particular record that you have in a file somewhere that's identified under this name. So there hasn't really been a lot of research. I don't doubt that there could be fees associated with that if you asked them to go dig out something related to it. But, but generally, when you're filing a FOIA, you've got to be, if you're going to get a response at all, it's got to be specific enough that the government can find it. Because if they, if they have to look for it, if they have to research, they're just going to tell you no. Yeah. So, yeah, and then you might have to appeal, and then you might have to sue, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so most agencies do accept FOIA requests via email. Some of them have online portals either on their own site. Uh, there are several agencies that go through FOIAonline.regulations.gov. Um, after you file it, you should, within a, a number of days, receive an acknowledgement letter uh, from the agency saying, hey, we got your FOIA request. We're working on it. Um, and if you don't, then maybe there's something going on and they've ignored it or they didn't receive it. Um, and then they're supposed to get something to you within 20 days or ask you, you know, let you know that they're going to need an extension. Uh, it's very rare, I found, that people get back to me within the 20 days uh, on the federal level. State level, though, uh, I have a lot more luck getting stuff fast as long as it's not like, uh, oftentimes, like some of the smaller towns do not get a lot of requests and they don't necessarily know how to handle them and so uh it can often take longer that way i just want to chime in on that. that's actually that's absolutely true we've we filed we filed requests at the federal level which have never come in within 20 days we filed requests at the state level for state documents you know for, for state agency records that have come in very promptly been handled very very accurately according to the georgia act and we filed some you know on on counties or or, or towns that just that that probably this is the first one they've seen in a decade and um you know they, they don't have half the time we're on the phone with them trying to work through how they're supposed to respond to our <laughs> to, you know, we're telling them what they're supposed to do to respond to us so yeah. it's, it's just something that that depends on who you're dealing with some agencies get 30 of these you know an hour some agencies get 30 of these a century and it's just not going to be anything they're used to dealing with yeah and some agencies on the local level do have um you know, uh, you know, pretty nice online systems that, you know, they're very organized and you can track it online through their website. Um, so, you know, say you file a FOIA request and they say, nope, you can't have it. We're not giving it to you. Maybe they give you a really good explanation. Probably they don't. Um, so what can you do? Um, the first thing is you can do is you can file an appeal. Um, there usually is details in the letter when they reject it on who you can appeal to. Um, one of my favorite uh, journalists who files a ton of FOIA requests, his name is Jason Leopold, and he always tells people, always appeal. Even if they give you records, file an appeal, because chances are they didn't find everything or there's still stuff they're not giving to you. If you're having problems, with an agency, maybe they're not responding, maybe they're playing dumb. Uh, there's an office called the Office of Government Information Services and they're kind of an ombudsman and they will, if you contact them and give them the uh, correspondence that you've had with the agency, they will jump in and mediate for you. And uh, I've found that, that federal agencies like don't necessarily like OGIS getting involved. So once OGIS is involved, they start acting a little better. Um, you could also try rewriting the FOIA request. Uh, maybe, sweet. Maybe maybe they're playing word games with you, and that you asked for one thing, but you didn't specify specifically something else. You can always try again. Uh, you could also sue, and uh, that's what we do a lot of. We do a lot of suing over the Freedom of Information Act. Um, oh. So some of the, oh. To repeat the question, is there an exhaustion requirement before you sue? I don't think so, but it always helps. Yeah, I, I you know, any administrative <coughs> act can, can make a claim that you've not exhausted all your remedies. That is a, that, that is a fairly common defense. I honestly don't know if it exists, you know, or if it would be raised in a FOIA challenge, because I've never had to do it. But uh, I, I don't, 
I would encourage you to try to exhaust all your remedies before you sue, just so that you don't run into that. Yeah, and and just to be clear, like no legal advice is offered, and I am not an attorney. He is. And I'm, I'm not. Legal so, um, so some resources for you. Uh, there's a, a three good sites for uh, using uh, their online system to file FOIA requests and to track them, and these also do on the local local level as well. I'm really a big fan of Muckrock. I do a lot of work with them. They partner up with us a lot. Um, it is, uh, they're a nonprofit, but it is, they do have like a sort of subscription service where you, you know, a certain amount and that gives you like 25 records requests because they do do a lot of work with you. Um, they do help you uh, phrase it and they do a lot of research and they do a lot of management. Um, as I noted before, some of you walked in late, uh, Muckrock has given us, uh, I think 150 requests for free uh, for as part of this panel. And if you, uh, I'll put up the slide again in a little bit. If you wanted to register with them and send me your username, I can add you to the group. Um, Reporters Committee for Free Press has a tool called ifoia.org. Um, it's not quite as robust as Muckrock, but it's also uh, fully free as well for you to use, as is FOIA Machine, which is very similar to ifoia. Um, if you're not satisfied with my presentation and you want to see something a little bit uh, longer and more intense, um, one of my favorite presentations is by a, um, uh, a former phone freaker named uh, Phil Lapsley and a uh, prolific FOIA attorney named Michael Rivnitsky, and they have filed like literally thousands of requests trying to get information on uh, phone freaking and other sorts of things. And they have a fantastic presentation that... Um, uh, looks at FOIA as if uh, you are hacking the government, but instead of tapping into their computers, you're filing FOIA requests to get information from them. Um, so here's my contact details. I'll, I'll throw it up again in a second, but just sort of jumping to that if you did want to file with us live. Um, and so uh, at this point, so we have another guest. You want to introduce yourself real quick? Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, I got called to Monday deal with some morning. issues. Uh, my name is Jason Mitchell, and I'm here on the Senior Director of Convention Operations. In real life, I'm an attorney that responds to Open Records Act requests, um, subpoena requests, uh, all kinds of requests for information. Um, I work for an agency in Georgia. I'm here in my personal little, uh, I'm here as myself and not in my official capacity, and so I'd really rather not talk about anything specific to my agency. But what I kind of want to do here is to be able to give you some insight from the side of the person who's going to fulfill your request and to, to discuss maybe ways of making the request more effective so that you get what you want and while uh, kind of making it easier because <coughs> In my experience, I don't know how far we've gotten into to talking about specific issues, is I'm not sure. I guess I've missed about 20 <laughs> minutes. Uh, how much substance have we gotten into so, so far? I, I've done a, a presentation taken through the, the basics of FOIA. Um, at this point, I just want to talk a little bit about, about I, I've done mostly the Freedom of Information Act. I do want to talk a little bit about the state level requests, All and right. then uh, I want to do some live filing of requests, but as I'm typing that up, you guys can uh, can fill in the the gaps a little bit if that's okay. All right. Just so you know, I introduced myself earlier, but I, my name's T.J. Myhill. I'm an attorney here in Atlanta as well, and, and I've filed some. So perhaps you and I. Can uh, I mean, if you put DragonCon in it or something, or that'll that'll work. Together work together to get these while he's doing his. Yeah. Files. And and also, I mean, I've filed open records requests too. You know, it doesn't. Every once in a while, things will come up that that are of interest to me. Um, whether it's pay disputes with a former employer and I want to see how much other people are paid. Um, did one for, you know, okay, maybe not, I shouldn't talk about that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, 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 let me, let me get this going because I'm going to have like a, a, a gap of air real quick. But okay, so sure. with, with, with state level requests, each state has its own policies. A lot of times they're, they're stronger than FOIA. A lot of times there's a lot less bureaucracy and, and delay like you get with on the federal level. 
Um, some states are better than others. I live in California, and I think California is kind of stinks. Uh, but New Mexico's law is really great. Uh, Florida's law is probably the strongest in the country in terms of what they have to give you. Washington State's is pretty amazing as well. Uh, one of the reasons I like New Mexico's is that if an agency improperly withholds records, there is up to a hundred dollar a day fine to that agency. So there's a Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of pressure on them to uh, handle things correctly. But I have known people who've got in excess of a hundred thousand dollars in a settlement from an agency that did not want to give over records. Um, <laughs> indeed. Um, so, oh, another question. Some states. The, wait, I, I, just oh. sorry. <laughs> Trying to make the, the video oh, good. Sorry. For yeah. for the question, the question was, do you have to be a citizen of the state to file a FOIA request under their under their FOIA Act? There's like I think about uh, seven or eight states where that's the case. Um, I'm very tired today, so my number might be off, and um, I'm not good at holding numbers in my head. Um, but one that comes to mind for for me is Virginia. Virginia, you do have to be a citizen, which. I think is really detrimental to Virginia's transparency because there's national organizations like us who don't have an actual office in Virginia, but we have members in Virginia. And so when we want to file a FOIA request in Virginia, we have to uh, find someone local to, to partner with us on it. Um, but I find it ironic that Virginia loves to have companies from out of state come bring business there and politicians are perfectly happy to accept you know, campaign financing from out of state, but uh, people who want information from them, oh well, can't have that. Um, so let's let's go. I want to get I want to get a, a FOIA request going. Um, anybody anybody got an idea? Uh, just to give you some sort of background on what we've done in the past uh, and and what ends up happening with these. Uh, so the first year we did this, somebody asked for, I think, uh, marijuana citation violations in California because California had recently decriminalized. Um, and we put in a FOIA request for that. We got a huge data set. Muckrock ended up doing a news story on it. Somebody else saw our FOIA request, duplicated it, filed it in like five other places, and then did a whole other sort of thing. Um, last year, I think we did one on um, uh, something related to the Department of Energy in Idaho and uh, I think like waste storage. The newspapers in Boise ended up doing stories on that once we got that back. So these things do have like a nice ripple effect. Anyway, somebody has somebody got an idea for something? What do you got? This is not exciting at all. <laughs> okay. I wanted to do Hit a, a request. Uh, so this would be state level. Okay. Um, what state? Uh, Georgia. Georgia. Okay. Um, we actually just built some new schools okay. in our city, and I wanted to know the networking cost for those because I'm very close to those facilities, and I just wanted to know what they did and how much it cost us. Okay, so so let me just take some uh, take some information for you real quick. I'm going to bring up a little notepad, and uh, I will get that going. Um, so, what is the uh, the the jurisdiction that we're looking at? You need the county? Is that what you're asking for? So it's it's a school. Thing? It's a school. Yeah. So so what county. county? What county are we at? Uh, Is it a county or a city? City county. Okay. Barrow, B A R R O W. I'm sorry, guys. I know this isn't exciting, but I couldn't no, think of so, much else. So so Barrow County is it like a school district there? Or is it is it just run by the county? It's just run by the county. Okay. There's no specific. Uh, okay. And so we're looking for networking costs. Mm -hmm. So what what do you mean by networking costs? Uh, any internet related setup. Uh, as far as like getting the school access to external internet resources. So are we talking like ISP stuff? Or are we talking just? Uh, well, honestly, I know it was all done by the same company. So what's the company? Uh, it's uh, Tech Optics. Tech Optics, one word or two words? One word. OK, one word. I think that's enough for me to start. And I will. Uh, you can watch me do it live on here. But if you guys want to talk about some stuff, and I can hand it over to you guys to be self-sufficient for a sec. <laughs> that, that, awesome. that actually kind of raises exactly what I was going to say. And Jason, I think I'd like to get your, your input on this uh, as the guy who responds to. But what we found is that you're going to have a much better response to your request, both in terms of not just getting told, no, can't find it, uh, but in terms of timeliness and in terms of completeness the more detailed you can be in the records that you're asking for. Um, if you had, for example, if, if we had filed that to just say networking costs, well, there's a fair chance Barrow County is going to call you back and go, do you mean how much we paid to take the guy out to coffee? 
do you mean how much we pay to join community associations or do you mean internet costs or do you mean all of that right they're, they're, they need to make sure that they understand everything that you're that you're looking for and a lot of times they're gonna say your request is unclear and I'm gonna deny it so then if you say I need to know all of your internet expenses or, or networking hookup expenses well that's gonna get you an answer but it may not be the answer you're looking for if you really want to find out how much the county paid whatever the name of that company was ask that that's what you want to find out get get that request if you want to also know some other stuff you know everything you've paid to any internet um, you know supply company including but not limited to this company but if what you really want to so, know so is on that let me just let me just say so what I've got up here is I'm asking for this is just the brief version I'm gonna fill it out a little bit more but I'm looking for procurement budgeting contracting and other spending documents regarding tech op tech optics IT services right Does that sound about right Yes, uh, okay. uh, this is specifically in relation to their uh, uh, building the new schools. They okay, built, for, uh, for uh, specifically it would be Russell Middle School. Russell Middle School, so, you, so we want to narrow it down even further for Russell Middle School. That's cool with you? Yes. Okay. Right, and that again, so the, 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 more, the more finely tuned you can give them the request, I think, as the one requesting it, I've been more successful in getting documents the more, the more detailed I can be. Jason, would you agree? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> it, I cannot tell you how many times I see something any and all related to and I have no idea what you're talking about and depending because I've done this at like two different levels I've been an open records officer there for a small law enforcement task force where it was easy we had like 10 or 12 guys and you send me a request in, and it's like okay you just need this report and okay I have to redact out some information here's the response. Uh, on the other hand, where I work now, it's much larger and you, if you hit me with something, I mean, I honestly may not understand what you're asking. And so I'm all about, uh, if we can make things more specific, so, so think about it a little bit and on how to, to, to get the request to precisely the sort What's the information? What sort of documents do you think are going to be there? Because like this, uh, the first thing that I asked, and I've actually done uh, this request professionally a, for a government agency, is we had somebody who was trying to sell us something, and I wanted to know how much it cost or how much it other people have paid for it. So. I saw who else was using their product, and part of it was I called the agency up first. They said, hey, what's been your experience with this? And it's like, I would also like to know how much it costs, and well, let me try it out. So I, I did an open records request for their contract, so I can see specifically. Now, a contract like this may be more complicated, where all the, the expenses may not be in the contract, uh, so it may be a little bit open on those, but then you can ask about receipts and, or uh, what do they call them, purchase orders, invoices, things, th things like that. That gets you a specific document. If I can go to one place, that, that makes my life a whole lot easier and I can respond maybe in hours as opposed to going around and asking a bunch of people. Go ahead and toss the box back there. We had a question. And while while we're tossing, I want to just one more. Um, the, the 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 statement came up earlier about uh, about fees and and costs associated with these. Remember too that you might be paying copying costs, and so you might be paying eight ten cents a page per you know per copy. And if you want a five page contract, well that's hey that's fifty cents. That's great. Right, but if you say I want all of your purchase orders for all your internet subscription to a county, well, <laughs> I hope you've got deep pockets because you just got a really big bill. So that's why a it's important to put a you know, limitation on, you know, please call me if it's going to be over. But also, you know, understand that the more you ask for, the more time it's going to take, the more expense it's going to be. So my question is, would you recommend going first to an open records request or going through other channels, like going to your elected school board members or actually like contacting the finance officer? Because sometimes will they share that stuff? I mean, like, so for contracts, I know in my school system, the school board has to approve it and it's on the monthly school board agenda for all the contracts they're approving and you can click on the document and see it. So 
is it out there or can you ask your like elected official to see if they can find the information for you? I would always do something other than a FOIA request first. I mean, it, it, now, that doesn't mean you might not follow up with one just to make sure that you've gotten everything that you're looking for because some people don't know all the answers, right? I mean, I, I certainly don't know everything that's in my files off the top of my head. Um, but it is, it, it, if, you, if you have access to other resources, it's going to be faster and easier for you to, to, to find them, you know, on the school board minutes or by talking to your elected official who may give you access to things or give you information because it's going to be turned up under a FOIA request anyway. They may say, no, you know what, I need you to send me a FOIA request to cover my butt, and then you do. Um, but it doesn't hurt to ask. But more importantly, so much of this information, especially now that everything's digital, so much of this is available from other sources that you don't have to go request it directly from the government agency. You can find it in other reports, in other, in other, uh, you know, white papers, in other uh, budget listings. It, it, there, there's a billion things that are filed online by counties and, and, and cities and, and state governments, federal governments, that it, it never hurts to try and find the information you're looking for before you file a FOIA request because you've got to wait all the time and, you know, go through the hoops and pay the fees, et cetera, that you can click it on Google. Certainly go that way first. Yeah. Because, and one of the things, depending on what you're looking for, uh, you know, if you, one thing like, I don't know how this works in the federal government, because Frank, the FOIA does not apply to the states per se, it only applies to the federal government. So each state's governed by its own laws. Uh, but like in Georgia, the Open Records Act doesn't require anybody to answer questions. So you have to phrase it for a document. But on the other hand, you know, if you just have a straightforward question, no, you don't know if somebody won't just answer the question. Yeah. In California, the, the law says they do have to be helpful, but whether they're actually helpful <laughs> is not necessarily the case. I like to troll them a little bit when they come back and they just say, nope, no records. And I'm like, California Public Record Act says that you need to help me identify my records and explain the uh, how to get over the practical hurdles of, of obtaining records, and then they might be a little bit nicer. Just real quick, I'm about to submit this public records request for the Barrow County and the Russell Middle School. Um, it's pretty simple. They fill, Muckrock fills in some of the language for you. Um, let me see if I can uh, enlarge it a little bit. Uh, but it just says, pursuant to the Georgia Open Records Act, uh, I'm going to request procurement, budget, and contract and spending documents regarding tech optics IT services to Russell <coughs> Middle School. Then it says the requested documents will be made available to the general public because when the documents come, they're going to go to Muckrock and it's going to be uploaded to the site. Um, and then it's saying if there's going to be fees, please let us know in advance. Um, uh, you know, and there probably won't be fees. Uh, there might be fees. And if it's something exorbitant, I'll probably just say like, hey, let's just reduce it down a little bit. Um, but uh, generally that's about it. What's going to happen is that there's going to be a thread, like an email thread that's going to be public. So we're going to send this. Barrow County will respond. That will appear here. If they don't respond, Muckrock will automatically send them an email saying, hey, what's up with my records? Hey, did you get this email? And they'll keep doing that until, until stuff comes. And eventually you'll get an email. I'll get an email saying, hey, you've got documents. And then that's like Christmas to me. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit submit on this. Hey, and uh, One thing on this. This is a brand new school. Uh, yes. The school was actually previously established with the building. Yeah, one thing in as a way of keeping things narrow is time frames can be helpful if you know when things happen. That's a good idea. Like Let's do that. Let's do that. So when was it built? Uh, literally this year. So I'd say in the past year. So let's do, let's do, because they may have started the, the project for that. Let's do 20, 2014 through 2016. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yeah. Sound good? Yeah, is, let's do that. Is that anything that, like I said, anything that kind of helps get you there? Like one of the things that that I see a lot and sometimes sometimes these will come from citizens sometimes they'll come from law firms well you get these huge requests that ask for all kinds of different things and there may may not you know they may have something specific in mind so one thing I think would probably be useful in some requests not all 
uh, is to start with issues like policy because if if you start with like a policy it's like I'm interested in let's see my backgrounds in law enforcement so we'll say use of force reports over you you want to know about officers who have been disciplined for use of force so maybe let's start with the policy it's like I want to see the policy uh, and forms related to this over this time frame and then once you have that you can start that having more narrow requests where it's like hey I just want I want these things that's going to get me what I want but I know exactly what it's called because sometimes the requests will come in because that uh, and you won't know what it is and so like when I get requests I've gone to Google to look it up and try to figure out what are they trying to get to or I'll go talk to public affairs and it's like hey what are you hearing about stuff and it's like oh they're looking for information related to this so I can shoot and, so I might instead of, I'm trying to think of a way to say this without just being really explicit about what the request was but uh, to try to get the request or to try to make make the request specific to what the person actually wants and so like if I see a reporter who's they have a specific issue and they say I want all this stuff I might say if I know what they're the sorts of things they're working on I might be able to go back and say hey I think this is what you need if you want more let me know and uh, and I, I find that kind of helpful and I in like I don't find it particularly effective to just give people a one sentence response of there are no responsive documents because that invites questions and quite frankly I'm a bureaucrat and I don't need questions I have a list of information requests on my desk and you know and I'm like a Vogon I want to go through and I want to mark all the blocks and say this is done this is done this is done I don't have to worry about this I can move on to something else because you know not only do I have these requests as I also have you know other work I need to to get to so let me let me do a, another request real quick anybody else got any ideas all right so let's try to let's try to figure it's, oh you got one Okay. Oh, hang on, we're waiting on the box. Oh, sorry. Okay, we are trying to collect information from the Office of Civil Rights about uh, discipline disparities in school districts. Wh which Office of Civil Rights? The, the DOE, the Department of Education. The of which? Civil Rights. Wh sorry. The U.S. Department of Ed. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do the U.S. Uh, Department of Ed. Okay. And we're looking at racial disparity issues for discipline? Yes. And you can limit that however you want. Okay. Any particular place or just nationwide? Um, I, it doesn't matter to me. Well, all right, let's, let's talk nationwide. And do you know anything else about it? Like, have you seen documents related to it before? Or yeah, I don't yeah. want to ask for anything you've already got. Um, much of it is public. Um, what's not public is the uh, offenses for which the discipline was given if that makes sense. So if they, we're looking at expulsions, for example, the underlying offenses for which people were expelled. Okay. And and it, so, so the documents you've already seen, where, where did you find them? The OCR website has oh, the, a lot. The, sorry, the what website? Uh, the Office of Civil okay. Rights website. Okay. And all right, let me, let me see what I can do. So again, I think here's a good place to follow up on, on what Jason was just saying as far as, as, far as being specific with with your with your codes policies statutes whatever the violation you look for. and this one there probably isn't you know necessarily with that but it's a it, it sort of ties into the idea of uh, of looking at what you've got first so for example I've, I've seen all these records in the office of civil rights I just need the background information on what exists to support these claims that are already up on your website when looking at the law enforcement thing, if you want a violation of you know all all discipline acts, disciplinary acts under a certain you know policy, the policy says you won't do X or you will do Y. Um, I want to see people who are vi who are disciplined under policy number you know 14-2-37, you know as set out in the policy manual, blah 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 on page 62. Whatever. Again, the more you can say specifically that this is 
this statute, this code section, this county code, this this you know local rule, this policy notebook. So starting out with that information first, and whether it's an open records request to get that policy manual so that you can read the policy manual and ask specifically for what you're looking for, or simply going online and finding the expulsion records to say this is the additional information I need, or going online to research the code section or the statutes that, that support what you're looking for, then you can cite specifically to what you're looking for and again, make everyone's life a whole lot easier in responding, make your life a whole lot easier in the fact that you're actually going to get what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. But but I, I I just want to be clear like these these you know th there is no real good formula for getting this stuff in the same way there's no formula for fishing and catching a fish you can kind of put a worm and people are going to suggest various lures to to do it but every agency is different and every person processing the forms in the agency is different and really it's a lot of trial and error you just try your best uh you can always hire a lawyer to be very very specific but that's not the point of these laws these point of the laws is not you know it's not the lawyer freedom of information act it is you know for these are public records and so i would just say it's more important for you to just try and see what happens than it is to feel daunted by the process and feel like oh well i just don't have the legal knowledge to do it really i want to see records come out but just be understanding with the agency work with the agencies to get it narrowed down if you're too broad the first time but just sort of jumping onto this so what i've i've uh i've drafted up here and you guys let me know if you think this is this is going to work uh i'm just asking for data on student discipline reflecting uh, racial ethnic demographics and underlying disciplinary offenses for the years 2013 to 2015. That sound pretty pretty good. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. Because because well, uh, like with this, you could wind up with an issue of they may or may not do they have that data. And <laughs> okay, so hold on. So d data well, held by the Office of Civil Rights. Civil rights, is that right? Well, I'm not saying to change it. No, but I think I think she she had asked specifically that, so yeah. I think we should do we should go for it, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, because one of the things that might happen, especially when you get, in, one of the things I do a fair amount of is work with analysts, because our analysts do work a, a fair amount with uh, researchers or public interest agencies to try to pull data, and sometimes data can be kept in weird ways, and it's like. Um, I had a researcher contact me recently for a count of something and it was just they they just asked for a number and that's what he got back now what our analysts pulled that's held by our agency and would be available to in a, in a request was a, a bunch of underlying data and it was a neat form and it was like hey this looks I was kind of interested in it and, but he asked for a number so he got a number I've decided to jump back to 2012 to 2015 because now that I'm thinking about it, I asked for 2015 and it's still 2016, so they may not actually have that data compiled. So let's, we want to get, you know, three years of data is a good good amount of data, I think, to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and start processing this. Um, the request is going to look a little bit different. Uh, instead of the Georgia Open Records Act, it's going to say Freedom of Information Act. Uh, it's filling in the, uh, the, the, uh, the language that they think is, is going to be useful. And this one, it will be a lot more simple, I think, because the, you know, uh, uh, you know, a local school district or school system is probably not dealing with as many of these. It doesn't have as much infrastructure as the U.S. Department of Ed. So I'm going to hit submit on this, and it's good. And one, one thing on that, too, again, just sort of tag teaming on what was just said, the in, in some in some requests, the data you're looking for isn't going to be data that's kept. You need to get the data to mine your own information for what you're looking for. In other words, <coughs> it it may exist or it may not exist in, in the you know Department of Ed or, or Office of the Rights as far as what the you know the the racial disparity or the or the racial breakdown of these things may be. But there may be records that show the, you know, the race of the student, which you then go and do your own math on, right? You, you, if you ask for the records that show the, you know, the racial disparity of, of expelled students, 
you may not get anything because there may not be a record that actually shows that. But if you ask what we ask for, the records that show the racial, you know, the, the demographics and the offenses, then you can take that and compile the information you're looking for yourself. So it doesn't hurt to ask for what you're looking for, but understand that it may not be something that the agency keeps, and they don't have to create a document for you. They just have to give you the documents they have. Anybody else have any ideas for stuff? Can I say one more oh. thing about this request? So one thing about thinking about who who's going to have the data, depending on how, I mean, it sounds like you're looking really broad, but one thing you might want to think about there is narrowing, narrowing your sample to, or to sample for that data and to maybe identify different boards of education because mm -hmm. they will have those records. Yeah. Well, they should, well, okay. As with anything in government or, well, in this country, I mean, it's a big country and everybody does things differently. But local boards certainly are the holders of that information. Now, if they store it in a practical way that you can actually get to it, you know, that's a, that's a whole other question. Because if that, that can be a problem with getting government records about how they're stored. Because, I mean, I've been stumped before. It's like somebody, I'll get a request and it's like, I, I have no idea who has that. Do we have that? And then it's a matter of starting to call around to, to people to determine or talk to the attorneys who have been in the office longer. Um, but that, that's another thing to maybe look at different places that might, might have that specific, or depending on how specific you want. So anybody else have any other ideas? I, I can help brainstorm some if nobody else is, is jumping in. I do have a question. So for my brain to summarize a little bit, so specific don't necessarily ask for the analytical, but ask for the data set so I can do my own analysis. Now, so with the data set, I actually have some pretty good tips for data sets. So when you're asking for a data set, not don't only don't just ask for the data set. Make sure you get uh, uh, the format of the data. Like uh, you know, they'll have something that's called the data dictionary. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to do that because otherwise you'll get a spreadsheet that you have no idea what the codes are that they're putting in there. T and F's in, yeah. a, in, in 27 piles doesn't yeah. do me any good, you'll, right? You'll, yeah, you'll want to ask for like what the template is. So if, so if it's data based on self-reporting, you're going to want to know what the worksheet that an agency is looking at so you have, have a good idea. Um, I think I want to okay, have them give you some better answers, but let me uh, just get one in the pipeline and then they can ask you. Anybody uh, from someplace interesting or interested in how their police are operating? Somebody just tell me, tell me, a pick, pick a place in the country. From St. Louis. St. Louis. Uh, I think that that's been pretty well tapped out in terms <laughs> of, of, of uh, public records requests. Anybody else got some place interesting? Well, here in Atlanta PD. We Atlanta PD. All right, let's just do Atlanta PD. Let's do a use of force policy. Uh, it's probably already gotten out there, but let's figure out what the Atlanta PD, let's put in a request and see, you know, what Atlanta PD is telling police officers when they can use force and what the process is for using force. How does that sound? Sound well, good? Yeah. Well, one thing that, I mean, because you're using muckrock, right? Yeah. One of the things you can do here is you can search muckrock and yeah, I guess right. there's probably a, about a 25% chance that it's probably out already on there. Let's see. Let's see. So, yeah. And you can also, if you find a, a good request that somebody else has filed, you can hit the clone button and it'll duplicate the language and you can add a different agency in there. So, yeah, they've got the Atlanta Police Department use of force uh, already, sit, already sitting here. So, but they, yep. So there we go. There it is right there. So let's pick another place. Any suburbs that are independent cities of Atlanta that you want to look at? Decatur. Decatur. Let's try to make sure Decatur is not there already. Nope. All right. We're good. All right. So I'm going to do that. You guys keep, you guys keep uh, chatting along. All right. Well, one thing I just, just to, your, your, your sentence earlier was correct. Yes. Be very specific. Ask for the data, not the answer. But it doesn't hurt to answer, ask for the answer, too. Well, well that was what my really, <laughs> my question is, as I'm trying to get the parts and pieces. My, my question is, so do I want to share with them? What I'm going to be doing with the data? No, don't. Okay, don't. just just asking because they don't. You don't. You don't have to. Sometimes, if you have, I would like the occasionally CIA doesn't want to help me. Yeah, but occasionally this company might. This yeah. agency might. Yeah, I, occasionally, if you if you started the request process and you feel like you've got a good relationship with the person handling it. Uh, then you can go in and say, like, this is what I'm interested in. Maybe you can tell them, but I would not do it from the get go. I would not 
show your cards and say like, hey, I'm looking to unearth this scandal <laughs> or something because then the public affairs person is going to go to up the chain and they're like, well, what are we going to do about this? You know, and uh, like, let's figure out ways to not give the data. So, I mean, I would, I would, I would be careful when you share that kind of information. Okay. So it's my other part. Yeah. He's like, he's like, no, tell me what you well, want. Tell me what you want. I, get, like, that I don't, I mean, frankly, I don't care. I, you know, my job is to respond to these records requests. Uh, now, if something comes up that's just like, hey, this is going to look bad. Yeah, am I going to let public affairs know about that? Yeah, I am. But on the other hand, you know, they don't have a choice. The law says what, what we have to release for the most part. There's some discretionary stuff. But yeah, I mean, the reason I say that, though, is just because uh, agency, you know, government agencies don't always behave well. I mean, and there's certainly corruption in government. And sometimes if they know that you're doing something, they may take action to discredit you. You might have a sheriff show up at your house and pound on your door, which has happened. Uh, there have been... Uh, uh, officials who have shown up at people's doors to intimidate them after they filed public records requests. I'm certainly that's not something that you're. What I was going to say is, if I'm requesting <laughs> different piles of information from different places, am I going to get on a, a watch list? Like, is this like? And I know at state and local levels versus federal, they're not going to put all that together. But yeah, um, well, you might be surprised what people can put together. You, you, although there is a, certainly a, a lot of chaos in between. The different levels of government but there also may depend i suppose it depends on what you're asking for um i don't know that especially a lot of people are dealing with this i don't know if they'll care but you know there might be some things where it's like you're at you know you might ask about something and then it might be like well wait a minute what just happened and it may be something that this person's asking about this because I've had requests that have come in. It's like, we're there's something that's going on here, and do we have a problem that we need to, to look into and address? Is the watchdog looking at us? Like well, no, no, not so much that. It's like, did we miss something? Or um, or is there something that's not where it's supposed to? Well, that's not a really good way of expressing that. But, yeah, sometimes you might look at it and say, hey, this is something I need to send over. It's like, did we actually look at this, and do we need to, to make sure that this is something that, that got handled? Or is this something that we need to – is this something that we need to fix? I mean, because, you know, things happen, bad things happen, and sometimes agencies need to fix it because, for the most part, most people are trying to – most people, especially – okay, I'm, most people are trying to do the right thing, and sometimes you don't know about everything. So, I, so sorry, just let me jump in here. So what I've got here is Decatur Police Department use of force policy, uh, the use of force reporting template form, if they have something that an officer is supposed to fill out when he's used force, and then any statistical data on use of force compiled by the Decatur Police Department from 2010 to 2015. They may not have that. Some of the larger police departments tend to have that kind of stuff because it's been a problem, and so they've started quantifying it. Does that sound good to you guys? Look good? Might be statistical data. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, if they have it. Yeah. yeah. Decatur, eh, they're probably big enough, too. All right, I'm going to submit. Oh, you have, you have a comment? No, no, you're good. I just have two little more questions. Well, let me, let, me just, uh, let me just jump in real quick before you ask a question, because I think there's a, a really good distinction to draw here, right? I think that you're going to get a very different answer to a lot of the things that you've already asked or, or, or going to ask from me and, and from David. And that's not because we have a different mindset. I'm probably least, less trusting of the government than he is. Me? Yo. I am not very trusting of the government. <laughs> like, I don't know what low. you're talking this about. Might, this know. might be a very low low hurdle here. But, but, I but trust this guy. Is, I trust this guy. This guy's all right. The, the point is, though, that the ones I file aren't going to ruffle any feathers. Right? I mean, we're looking for stuff more like the first one we filed. We want to get the data on how much you paid this contractor because we're having a dispute with a contractor. We've got, we've got a, you know, one client who's suing another client, and all we want to know is, what did the county pay this guy? Okay, we've got, uh, you know, a family dispute, and we want to know whether there's, a, you know, any type of uh, defects, uh, you know, file on the guy we think is taking advantage of his incapacitated aunt. 
no one cares. That's not going to ruffle any feathers. If there's a file, there's a file. They're going to give it to me. And if there's not a file, they're going to tell me, you know, no, or, or there's nothing there. Um, but at the end of the day, no one's going to look at that and say, oh, I better send the sheriff to TJ's house. Uh, whereas the stuff that, that, that David's filing and the types of FOIA requests that, that activist groups are filing are obviously going to be much more um, have a, have a much greater effect on the recipient than the stupid crap I file that's just paper pushing. So the truth, though, is that there are 600 times as many stupid, crappy, paper pushing ones filed than there are, and you know, the 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 the, the feather ruffling ones. So my experience is probably much more sort of commonplace, but it's also the one that doesn't actually get any reaction from anyone. The, 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 the few that get reactions are going to get big reactions. So that's the, that's the difference in, I think, the, the opinion you're going to get from me versus David as to whether you want to be very, very helpful with the agency because no one cares about the crap they give me. So the more detailed I can be, the more likely I'm going to get what I want. Whereas if you're trying to get data that you're going to use in a way that's negative to that agency, yeah, you may not want to be quite so forthcoming in your initial. So it's just a, it's a difference of it's a difference of attitude and opinion because of the nature of the request being made. So I think we're at time now. Um, I will be uh, hanging out. At, we have a, a table on this floor on the, the concourse area next to the, the grand ballroom. If anybody wants to come file more FOIA requests with me, jump over I've got it's gonna be pretty slow for the next two hours I think so I'm happy to kill some time by uh, prying information from the government um, anyway I just want to thank our panelists for, for joining us um, you, you had one last like thing to sneak in two, two quick questions one two quick questions two quick questions what the, the first one like you were talking about like copying paper copying like for 20 cents of paper kind of thing yeah. but under the paperwork reduction act like they're trying to give you electronic. So in your request- I always, always, always ask for electronic records first. Right? That's what my real thing was like. That's this minor question. Like, yeah, okay, no, so I, you get I, it back electronically, can you tell them how you would like to get it if you can? Yeah, you generally- scan gen yeah. of a book. You know? Yeah, put something in there saying, I would like this in digital format, email it to me. Um, some Hello? places just don't know how to do that. Sometimes uh, the number of people who have oh, printed out emails, then scanned yeah. the emails, and then emailed me a scan of the emails, it has that happens so much that it, it, it's, it just drives me batty every time. So. Not um, necessarily. Sometimes, I, yeah, maybe. I had somebody, tr I was trying to get photos from a lineup from a jail one time in South Georgia. They offered to print it out and fax it to me. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> Some places, I mean, the thing is, you never know what you're going to get with with the government. Some places are super squared away and some places it's a mess and then some places it's just, you know, that might be what's on file. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, you can never tell. I mean, the, yeah. if you're interested in some of these horror stories, every year in March is Sunshine Week and I p compile something we call the Foilies. It is awards that we give to agencies for ridiculous responses to public records requests. <laughs> um, uh, what's that? If that if that if you if you get jailed for filing a oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that is I think that is on my list I believe that is on my list for 20, 2017. Uh, that happened this year right oh yeah, yeah. so it, it is I, I remember it it is on my list that I'm my running list of things to give awards to we come up with funny names for them uh, it comes out uh, whatever it's 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 in March sometimes and we tend to have a whole bunch of alt weeklies around the country. Uh, republish it so you may see it actually uh, on newsstands where you live. But anyways, I think we're over time. I think just make sure I, we get out of here so the next panel can come on in. Again, over there, table, anybody still interested. Thank you so much.